are connected now to the special operation for uh Lindsay, you were muted very... so we didn't hear you. you you may start from the beginning sorry we start to restart yes we didn't hear you you were muted so we can start from the beginning okay we start from the beginning all right okay so now yes now i also see my little face among you so uh, good evening or good morning, good afternoon to everyone who is connected from Europe, from United States, from Australia, all over the world, from South America. We are here together to unlock the Hebrew code, the Kabbalistic Hebrew, in order to find what is really the meaning of the Hebrew and how it can help us in our life, in our spiritual life, and to see how unique it is language and why even Hebrew was selected to be such a unique language to enable us such a rich knowledge, emotions, even specifically uh, uh, in this language of Hebrew. So uh, I would like shortly to uh, present myself. My name is uh, Ben Zion Gertz. I'm studying Kabbalah over 20 years. Uh, about a year ago, I was graduated, uh, got my PhD for uh, Kabbalah and globalization in the subject of education. And lately, I was also dealing with the Hebrew language as a um, we also been graduated as a professional editor in, the, in Jerusalem, in the Academy of the Hebrew Language in Jerusalem. And uh, all together made up uh, my mind also with, uh, with you this, so we could really share all this knowledge for you. We really want to connect to the source, uh, to the Kabbalah and to the Hebrew language and uh, to share with you all really the special insights we have in this language. So, uh, before we continue, uh, we will see a small clip of the opening words of uh, Dr. Rob Lightman, uh, who will lead us really to the uniqueness of the Hebrew language. So, now we will watch a clip, please. Language is 
very important. It's not that you can learn, you can learn physics in whatever language, in all of the sciences of this world. But the, the Hebrew language, the language is very important here. It's not that you can learn, you can learn physics in whatever language, in all of the sciences of this world. But the, the Hebrew language and the Kabbalah, the spiritual vessels, lights, actions, it, it's the same thing, meaning they're the same thing. So when you read a word, you're not reading a word. You're moving from kli to kli to kli because the letters are replaced. Uh, you move from letter to letter and that way you discover the creator. And every letter is a sign, an indication, and every word is sort of a pattern. It's like a code. You have these secret codes, right? Or uh, all these, how do you call them? Hackers? Not hackers, no, I mean, uh, people programmers. Okay, no, I meant codes <laughs> to summarize codes and uh, some encryption. But here there's special codes because every word, every pattern, every the order of the words, every root of the word in Hebrew, it all stems from the relation between lights and vessels. That's where the language comes from. It doesn't come from earthly kind of agreement and usage. No, it came, you could say it came straight down from the heavens because of the relations of the lights and the vessels. And the more we know it, the more we can penetrate mm. deeper into the, the connection between light and sleep to feel the, the flavor, feel why, why it is so. I guess from above it's plant that I'll personally like it, but I feel a great harmony in it and an inner kind of connection between the forces of nature which is performed by the presentation of the letters. And so I'm not talking about uh, such lofty things, and I'm not talking about the language itself, or, which we learn in school, for example. I remember hearing once an explanation from her that she teaches something close to the source text, and I think that it's worthwhile. I think it's worthwhile. The main thing is that it helps you understand the interpretation of the words, because sometimes we say a few words, and if you translate them to English, for example, or any other language, for that matter, you lose, you lose the essence of the explanation of the word itself, what it actually means and translate it, it may, you'll see in a very exterior aspect of it, perhaps, of the, the action which it describes, but in Hebrew, if we know the, the word, that word provides you with the content of the Kli, how it's interconnected with other uh, vessels with the light, the type of feeling, nekudot and so on. We know it from the tanta, where all these things come from, how these discernments begin to be discovered. And so again, because we have 22 letters, and uh, 9, 9 and 4, 
nine is Bina nine, the Akbin and four Malchut and the Mansapach letters, the five which uh, five letters which stand at the Balsa and the Nekudot. We learned a bit about the Nekudot right now, which are the departure of the lights, which create the Nekudot. The Nekudot are the Kelim, and they are they disappear. We don't use them so much. We only intend for them. We don't learn of these signs, which these marks, which it's very important though. Language, it, it can open the wisdom up for you completely. If we knew the inner meaning of the words and the order of the words and letters, that's everything. In a nutshell, you don't have anything else. It's the revelation of the Creator to the created being. That's how it comes, how it comes about. Okay, we have just heard the words of Rav. So, in this course, we will not study just the everyday Hebrew languages. We, the Israelis, speak the Hebrew, but it doesn't mean that we know the, the spiritual code of the language. But uh, here in this course, no matter what background we have from the Hebrew, uh, that doesn't disturb us to unlock really the code of the Hebrew and get its spiritual information for us to find the meaning of life through the Hebrew language. Usually we as uh, Hebrew speakers, uh, Israelis, uh, relate to the, like, this language as, uh, as English, as any other language, casual language. There's no special information like for us about the Hebrew. But this is not what we are going to study together in this course. We are not going to study how to manage in the airport in Hebrew, or, uh, uh, how to, to sell things in Hebrew. No. We really want to have a deep penetration into the Hebrew language that will enable us to discover together what stands behind this language, the purpose of its creation, and so on. So Hebrew, for us, will be a tool to unlock the meaning of life. We will discuss the structure of the spiritual worlds, how through the Hebrew language we can really see how the worlds were created. And this is the first time in history that uh, we're making such a course. So we will try our best to adapt according to your needs, interest, and suggestion. And of course, we will uh, uh, consider all your uh, feedback and, uh, and adapt. So we will have uh, the best uh, uh, convenient and effective course uh, for you. And let's start from a really a very simple uh, example. Uh, when I opened the course, said uh, it said shalom, yes, or all you perhaps heard this word shalom, and we know in English hello, yes. So normally it's like two words that uh, have the same meaning, yes, shalom and hello. That's how we greet people and say hello or in the phone call. But how these really words are really have the same meaning? So uh, let's uh, look at the word shalom. Yes? What is the word shalom? Shalom is one of the names of the Creator. All the Torah, the Bible, it is said that all the names, all what is written in the Bible are the names of the Creator. And it's written in Hebrew. So it comes out that all the Hebrew words are not just words to describe our corporeal world, but very special entities that we want to discover them. Every word in Hebrew, uh, basically the verbs, has a root. If we take shalom, this is comprised of three letters, Shin, Lamed, Mem, three letters. Mensi, you should open 
in your presentation just to scroll down because we don't see nothing you are saying. Mm -hmm. Sorry to stop you, but like okay, not moving and we don't see not not shalom, not shinla. <laughs> Okay, so I hope that hello again and shalom again. <laughs> so, uh, so shalom, as we said, is comes from the root shalem shin, first letter, second letter lamed, and third letter mem. And from this root, we can create many words. One of the words is also shlemut. Shlemut means completeness. And we see that there is really a connection like between the words, Shlemut and Shalom. They sound almost the same. And they have also very close meaning. Shlemut is a quality. Shalom is also a name. So the completeness, the Shlemut, is the quality of the Creator. Shalom. But if we take the translation of, of these words, no matter in whatever language we pick, so for instance, because we're just now giving this course uh, in English, so perfectness and creator, I mean, it's like two words that were just, have no coincidence, I mean, they have no, uh, nothing in common in their, the way it is sound, the way it is written, it can be the perfectness of something else. And uh, there is no really uh, a connection between them. But here in Hebrew, the words from one word, you can also extract other words and find what is their common. And this is also what's so special in Hebrew, that every word has a very deep meaning and not that it has a deep meaning, it really relates to the creation. And this is amazing. It comes out that Hebrew is a, like a scientific notation to describe all the spiritual, all the wisdom of Kabbalah, all the system of the worlds. It is used by Hebrew. It's like Latin for uh, medicine or Italian for, for music. Uh, Greek, uh, nothing for philosophy and other languages. So, uh, why then all these names in Hebrew that have a different use than in other languages? So really we find here a different layer in the Hebrew language that we want really together to unlock and to discover. Uh, the Kabbalists write a lot about this language of Hebrew. Uh, Rabash has an article named All of the Torah is One Holy Name. This is the name of the article, but this is an excerpt from the Bible. That says what we already spoke together, that all the names are describing the Creator. If we take just the word Torah, Torah, inside we will see the word, the letters O. So what is Torah? Torah is the teaching of O, teaching of the light. Again, we see Torah and O, we can have almost the same writing, have a very similar sound inside, but in any other language, teaching and light has no connection. But it does have a connection in Hebrew. So Hebrew is really the language of connection. Not just connecting words, because the words symbolize desires, correct desires, vessels, as we will see later, and how the light is connected to a vessel. Now, take another example. 
usually uh, when we uh, when you speak about uh, language so there's also a programming language for computers and uh, as far as I remember my all when we started uh, to to program no matter what language the first assignment was to write hello world again so we have hello world okay we spoke about a, a little bit about hello but what is world this a real world what does it the meaning of the world so let's go to Hebrew. If we want to understand the meaning of some, something, we need to switch to Hebrew. In Hebrew, world means olam. Olam comes from the word elem. Elem means concealment. Wow. So why this world, its meaning is concealment? What is concealed? what is hidden from us and if we say hello world if we say shalom olam what the meaning can be shalom is the like we said it's like the name of the creator it's big speaking about completeness and the world is olam olam is a concealment so perfectness and concealment how it does it go together? Very interesting. So we see that there are very deep meanings to explore in the Hebrew words, especially when they come together and try to create another meaning as uh, Shalom Olam. And in English, hello world is just uh, this world in any or in any other language but in hebrew if olam is elem is the concealment and have perfectness so it has, all has a meaning about the spiritual world the world of giving the hebrew language also has a name called the language of holiness of gdusha holiness gdusha in Hebrew means kadosh, special, special because it's the language of bestowal, of distinguished. The bestowal is distinguished from just the real world. So all the terms in Hebrew are really meaning terms of bestowing, terms of bestowal. All the Hebrew names with now no conclusion as we had saw in the exam that all the names in the Bible, in the Torah, is one word, one description of the Creator. In Hebrew, we also have uh, the vowels. But uh, what's so special in Hebrew, like not in other languages, that you can read without vowels. And this is really strange. But we will do it together. We will know after this course how to read without the vowels. And uh, of course, if we try to imagine how can we read any other word in German or in English to remove the vowels in any other language, it's impossible. How can, can we even guess the meaning of the word? But in Hebrew, it is possible. Later, we will see uh, why it is possible. And mostly, uh, when we you know the... Uh, the letters you can also read without vowels. So, if we would like to summarize uh, this uh, welcoming message, is the Hebrew really has a very special meaning, and you want to know what is your meaning to your life? Switch to Hebrew and get instruction for meaningful life, because you don't know what the world is. You don't know anything about what you are living. But if you try to describe it, even to name it in Hebrew, and look, what is the meaning of these words, the question you are asking in Hebrew, you can find answer. So, uh, what is expected in our course? First of all, uh, 
about uh, in our class structure. So of course, we will discuss the Hebrew letters as we, as we saw now in the introduction. We will know how to uh, pronounce them, to read them with vowels and without vowels. We'll have also a Hebrew reading practice. And uh, of course, we will, everything will be connected to the uniqueness and the secrets of the Hebrew language. And of course, it's not just uh, information, it's all belong to us, relate to us. How can we utilize the qualities of the Hebrew for our spiritual work, for our completeness? So uh, in this course of uh, 10 week uh, lessons, yes, uh, uh, we currently uh, basically plan also three semester of study because in this uh, course, the first level course, we call it, of course, we will focus on the depth in the study of the letters and reading the Hebrew. And later in the second course, we plan to uh, decoding, classing Kabbalah, reading texts and essential Hebrew vocabulary for Kabbalah study. And more than continuation and deepening the second semester task with uh, listening comprehension uh, skills. Benzi, we don't see your presentation again. It's like stuck on Shalom Olam and that's it. Okay, so uh, we were talking about uh, the structure of our, of our study, the study methodology. What is speaking is special in the methodology of, uh, of this course is that because we are studying here, not just uh, a simple course, just getting some knowledge in programming or uh, in computers or whatever, or just giving, giving, we have an exam and just we need to get a grade and to get a diploma. Uh, we really want to uh, penetrate, as we said in the beginning, to the Hebrew language and to find something inside, inside us through the Hebrew language. That's why we're going to use dialogic circle in class as really uh, the groups uh, and the Kabbalists and the people of Israel who tried uh, to which all these spiritual realms were studying in such groups. So we're also going to imitate them. And uh, later when you will have your uh, uh, homework assignments, uh, we will uh, help you uh, to uh, be divided into uh, study groups. And then you can really accomplish uh, really the study of the Hebrew through the uh, circle uh, rules. And so that's why all this course is really, really special and not just uh, gaining some knowledge uh, and technical uh, information about any, any language. So uh, we have just covered with you the goals of this course. I'll uh, uh, summarize them. So we see the Hebrew as the code beyond any ordinary language. Uh, we want to develop the ability to read and decode Kabbalah texts, uh, the ability to listen to morning lessons with, with, uh, with translation and follow text reading, and then also the course will touch some historical, metaphysical, allegorical aspects of the Hebrew. And uh, we uh, really uh, hope that uh, uh, after all of this, uh, pass of three course level, you will be able to uh, listen to the, uh, to the lessons, follow the source, the Kabbalistic source, uh, without translation, because you will have all the ability to draw the power from the Hebrew, because you will be connected to the language. You will not be connected to a simple mind, so you want just to understand what is being said. You will feel the language because you will know the letters, 
you will be connected to its deeper meaning. I mean, the forms of the letters. For you, the forms of the letters will need just another printed uh, uh, ink on a white paper or just an image that you try to, to speak with your mouse. But for you, it will be a simple something of your something, uh, uh, a part of you that really uh, resides in you. So after covering uh, this uh, introductory part, uh, we would like uh, uh, to give you an, a little bit uh, some uh, uh, historical background of the Hebrew where all it started. Uh, basically, Hebrew come from the word Ivri or Avar, Ever, meaning beyond other side, across, yes? For us, we, we, it's like beyond, beyond the egoistical board, yes? So we want to cross, to go across the spiritual, get to the spiritual border. And really, all the people of Israel, they were uh, also called uh, for this name uh, about Ivrim because they were uh, like crossing the Jordan River to the uh, west side. Uh, basically, the Hebrew language as a language is not mentioned even in the Bible. What interesting is that uh, the language that is used uh, in the Bible is called Yehudit, from the word Yehudi or Yehud, like Abraham Yehudi. Yehud means communion, connection. So Abraham was called Yehudi because of his quality that he communed with the Creator. And every desire, every soul which has a connection with the light, with the Creator, is Yehudit. That's why its language called Yehudit, because she, everything that she pronounced, that she comes out of her, is bestowing, bestowal. And it's also uh, mentioned in the book of the Kabbalist uh, 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 Yuda Levi of the uh, book famous Kabbalah Kozari. There he uh, gives a story about uh, that Ivri, what's the name, it was the ancestor of Abraham more than 3,000 years ago, that uh, while there was the, uh, all this. Uh, the disaster from Babylon, then uh, the crisis, uh, this Ivri, he uh, was somehow managed to get out of Babylon and uh, was not suffered from all the problem of the language of the, of, and of the ego that was at that time. And from there came Avraham and uh, became uh, the leader of all that group that uh, did not mix with all the Babylonians, and as we know, had all uh, this spiritual path to Egypt until they get to the uh, uh, Israel, which is called the, the desire direct to the Creator. So uh, uh, this is a little uh, a short. Uh, background about the historical uh, uh, background of, uh, of the Hebrew. Uh, about the use of Hebrew, it's also very interesting because only in the biblical era, the Hebrew flourished as a spoken language in the kingdoms of Israel and Judea during about 1200 to uh, 586 before the common era. At that time, people were speaking uh, Hebrew. But uh, after this time, the Aramaic language, the language that the Zohar was written, took place of the Hebrew. Uh, well, this is because uh, historically, the Neo-Babylonian Empire conquered the ancient kingdom of Judea, destroying much of Jerusalem and exiling its population far to the east in Babylon. So uh, during the Babylonian captivity, many Israelites learned Aramaic 
the closely related the Semitic language of the capital. So Aramaic is also like the sister language of, of Hebrew. By the way, in Aramaic, uh, uh, the word, uh, you know, we know that the word or in Hebrew means light. But in Aramaic, almost the same word, orta, means darkness, right? The contrary. That's why the, it's, uh, the Aramaic is considered to be like, or like the rear side of the, of the Hebrew language. So, uh, so there, that's for a significant period, the, uh, uh, really the Hebrew had ceased to be an everyday spoken language somewhere between uh, 200 and until 400 of the common area. And uh, later, even uh, it was uh, extinct as a colloquial language by the late uh, uh, the third and the eighth centuries after the common area. And it continued to be used as a literary language and liturgical language of Judaism, but was not spoken. And only its revival as a spoken language became late in the 19th century, uh, by Eliezer ben Yehuda, when it was the time, uh, let's say, uh, Bala Sulam was born, and they also came to Israel. And this is the time that the Hebrew language uh, became, uh, of course, there was also a big debate, should be uh, the Hebrew language become a spoken language? We just discussed that uh, Hebrew was the code, to use for spiritual reans and to discover uh, the creation. How come we, we need to, to speak this language? Uh, Jews who were in the diaspora, whether they spoke the local language, German, English, French, never mind where they were, Arabic, Yiddish, Ladino. And the Hebrew was used only for, uh, for writing or for or special purposes. And this is, was really a, a big change, as we see now. It's part of the development of the, of the nations, of the Israeli nation, uh, using the Hebrew not in its original form as a spiritual uh, notion, but as a daily notion. And about the Hebrew letters, all what we have today is uh, the earliest Hebrew writing yet discovered is around, we have 3,000 years ago. That's uh, uh, what we have. So let's now try a little bit to see some uh, uh, practical, uh, take some, uh, Hebrew letters and see about the form, what can we find in these letters uh, as the Kabbalah sources uh, tell us. Uh, of course, the Kabbalists, they uh, chose the Hebrew language to describe the upper worlds. Basically, what is a language? Language is to connect between, you can say connect between people, Otherwise, how they can connect? Connect between desires. Desires which speaks different language cannot be connected internally. But uh, the more deeper uh, meaning of language is to connect between the root and the branch. And this is really the, uh, the function of the Hebrew to connect the root and the branch. And that's why the Kabbalists, uh, they use the Hebrew to describe the upper worlds. Basically, when we uh, experience something, feeling a sight that we see, we feel it, but we don't have words to describe it. That's why it is written that the Kabbalists like, invented this language of the branch language that 
to pick some corporeal items in order to point to an upper entities, because we cannot speak and describe the upper entities, because they are beyond and much over the words that we are using here in this world. But the Kabbalists manage to find a connection, which is called a root and brand connection, use words like from this world to point on spiritual entities and try and to describe us their connection and enable us a connection by this to the spiritual realms. So uh, let's try uh, uh, to look, uh, take later an example as uh, uh, before, before we go to the uh, Hebrew letters, letter by letter, uh, now you see in the screen uh, the Hebrew letters as wrote the famous scientist, Sir Isaac Newton. Well, it's very interesting that uh, the most, perhaps the most greatest scientists that all physics and all knowledge is based on his, was studying and getting his inspiration and knowledge from the book of Zohar at his time. And uh, at, this, at that time of uh, the 16th century in Europe, uh, a lot of interest became to the book of Zohar. And uh, a lot of people uh, tried to uh, uh, translate this book to Italian, to Greek, to many languages. And uh, philosophers, scientists, at that time there was no also a distinguishment between scientists or philosopher. It was all in the beginning. So, uh, the, but they all were interested in the structure of creation, the powers in creation. And uh, there's a lot of manuscripts that now uh, become available that exposed Newton, how he was interested in Hebrew and how he was studying, uh, trying to understand from the Zohar, the forces in this creation. And that gave him the inspiration and knowledge to put all the laws of creation, of physics, the laws of Newton, the first, the second, the third, whatever. And uh, of course, there were more scientists, more philosophers that uh, really managed to work with Hebrew. So dealing with Hebrew is not, is not new. It's all over history. Uh, Bala Salam even uh, writes that uh, all the big philosophers, uh, Plato and others, were studying at the Kabbalist schools. And they just uh, uh, used this knowledge in order uh, for uh, corporeal goals to, uh, to describe what is happening in our world rather than in the spiritual world. Okay, so let's, uh, after we have uh, had a journey from a uh, thousand years before until now, until the time of uh, when Bala Sulam came to Israel with uh, uh, Rabash, and started also uh, uh, writing in Hebrew. But it's interesting, uh, Bala Sulam uh, was teaching in English, not in Hebrew. There are uh, recordings, I hope we can get them uh, later and uh, we'll let you hear uh, his voice. He was speaking English in the lessons, teaching his commentary of the Sulam, not Hebrew though the text itself was in Hebrew. So we see that Hebrew is really very special, very unique. It's not neglected. That we can, you can, Hebrew is not a normal language. It's not just a language that we use for connecting between ourselves. It's really something that helps us to connect beyond, beyond our uh, daily meaning. 
So uh, after uh, looking at these, uh, the manuscripts of Isaac Newton, let's uh, take uh, like the, the first letter of, uh, of Aleph and see uh, how it is uh, uh, structured, yes? And uh, now you can see uh, not only Aleph, some letters that uh, uh, we'll see here the, odd, the letter uh, Daled, the letter Shin, and uh, what else we see here. Okay, so let's take, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, the letter uh, Aleph. So you can see, uh, you know what, Aleph is a bit complicated. We start with uh, the letter Daled, which is, uh, has like this line, horizontal line, and the vertical line. Yes, a very simple letter. Benzi, can uh, you please spotlight the Dalit just because like people here not ever uh, yeah. know where is Dalit, where is Aleph? Okay, okay. I, then, okay, then I will then share uh, the screen. In. Okay, so um, Let's get to the just a second. Just almost um, need to show you no, just a second. Yes. Let's go to, yes, okay. A spotlight. Oh. Okay, so uh, this is the letter Daled. Okay, and uh, you see that there is the horizontal line above like a roof and there is the vertical line, and there is also, uh, yes, a corner. There's also a corner between them. Okay, so horizontal line symbolize us the, uh, the light of Hasadim. That means it's like uh, it's the way the light operates, like uh, horizontally means that bestowing, giving, and we have the light of Chokhmah goes vertically, also called wisdom, but we will use the word, the Hebrew pronunciation, the Hebrew terms, in order not to confuse without the corporeal meaning of uh, all the uh, uh, words uh, in spirituality. And we see that the uh, letter Dalet connects like the two, two qualities, qualities of Hasadim and qualities of, of, of Chokhmah. It is very special because like there are two uh, contrary uh, uh, qualities because Chokhmah is uh, received, can be, only in the vessel of receiving, and Hasadim is a vessel for, for giving. And here there's somehow connected here in this letter Dalid. Letter Dalid also used as a notion to uh, the name of the Creator, name of God. Many Hebrew books are written as Dalid and apostrophe to say Hashem 
the creator. So this is uh, the letter Dalet in a simple uh, description. Uh, uh, if we look at the letter Shin, Shin, you see here three lines. Yes, letter Shin. Letter Shin is, uh, uh, in order that we have the left, the right, and the middle line. So all these letters we see give us, reminds us the meaning, the spiritual meaning that these letters are not just an information to read in the newspaper, but our inner structure that resides in us. And the famous letter uh, Aleph, the first letter, Aleph is also the letter of the creator because Aleph is the beginning of the word Aluf the champion, yes, this is the translation, but we uh, saw in the beginning that the translation really doesn't give us the uh, whole information and even any information about the real meaning as we encounter in the beginning, like analyzing the words of Shalom or Olam against the world and hello. So Aleph, that's the first letter, is really the letter of, uh, of the Creator. Also the name of the Creator, Elohim, also starts with the letter Aleph. Elohim is also named from the uh, Sephira of Bina. And uh, what is special in this diagonal line is that it separates uh, the lower part of Aleph which symbolizes the desire to receive, called Malchut. And uh, the Chokhmah, the light which cannot be received in just the vessel of Malchut, and there is this separation. And this separation is called Parsa. Okay? And uh, how it is all connected and how it is rolled, so it symbolizes that there is a restriction for the, for the light. So the light cannot touch the vessel directly. It's, there is a separation. And uh, Aleph also symbolizes the second restriction that happened in the evolution of the world. So that uh, it's all called the second uh, restriction. So every name that has the word Aleph has the meaning that it has evolved through a second uh, restriction. Uh, in addition to the, to the form of the letters, there are also the vowels, like they come, whether they come below, here like called nekudot, here we say kamats, Atach, or there are also some signs we'll see now in the next uh, slides uh, that some symbols above the letters called tagin, but they are all symbolized not uh, graphical fonts for a graphical designer, they're all symbolized how the light penetrates to a vessel, how light. Uh, leaves the vessel, and what happens to the vessel after the light is departing, departing the vessel. And all of these symbols has a very deep meaning and have also very strict rules how to draw them and all satisfy spiritual rules. So this is all the 22 letters of the Hebrew from Aleph to Taf, the beginning. They're all comprised like one word called Emet. Aleph is the first letter, Taf is the last letter, and M is in the middle. Okay, Emet is the Hebrew word for truth, also one of the names of the Creator. And these are all the, like all the vessels all the levels that all these letters together give us a complete vessel in order 
to draw the light the, uh, that surrounds the vessel. So, the letter Aleph we already saw before. Yes, uh, we see here in the structure, the diagonal here, this line, which separates the light of Chochmah and the vessel of Malchut. And the diagonal means the Parsa, that Malchut can uh, go up and be in this, uh, in order to elevate itself and cross this border, she needs to connect with Bina. And we see also forms, how it is, uh, if you open the Torah, all this uh, um, book, uh, that all the letters are also written in a very special form. You see, it's different. This is like a book. Okay. Uh, there are many fonts, like in Windows. But here, and it's, here we don't see here, but there are also some signs here that may appear in the up or in the bottom and more, but you see here some different uh, lines that do not appear here. And this is the letter Aleph. Okay, this is the way uh, we print, it's a print handwriting, yes, how we write the Aleph in simple, goes one, two, and three, how we write the letter Aleph, of course, we will also practice writing letters. And uh, the most uh, uh, common writing the letter Aleph is in this way. It's called cursive handwriting. So these letters you will find in newspapers, but people who write, if you take a manuscript of uh, anyone who writes a letter or handwriting, this is, uh, uh, the, the form of, of the letters. Okay, and we also don't want to insult the second letter bet, yes? But all the letters, as it is said in the Book of Zohar, in the article of the letters of Rabbi Himnona Saba, all letters were coming to the Creator and tried to convince him to create the world with them, because like they are the most important. And uh, we will see in the end of this lesson what was the direction of the creator to these letters. Uh, we see here the letter bet, which has also two roofs. Yes, like one roof is like is the symbolized the bina, and the second roof symbolized malchut. Again, malchut is the desire to receive bina is uh, the quality of giving and how it should be connected. She needs a connection. Malchut cannot come to Bina directly. She needs a connection, someone to be in between. And this is called Zer Ampin, or Yesod, or Kadosh Baruch Hu. Kadosh Baruch Hu means the Creator. So the Creator is the power that connects the desire to its quality of giving, Bina. This why the letter bit. Again, this is how it's used in the, all the Torah books, the Bible books, and this is just a normal book form, newspapers, documents. This is how it is in a print handwriting, and this is how it's in handwriting when you write letters, uh, not printing. So uh, this, uh, we are reaching uh, our uh, end of our first meeting about the Hebrew language, about unlocking the Hebrew language, and uh, uh, we would like uh, uh, to end with uh, uh, a paragraph from the Zohar in Hebrew. You can also uh, follow uh, uh, in English, see the the meaning, but usually we will more and more uh, uh, use the Hebrew because, as we saw, the translation 
cannot include all the levels, all the deepness of the Hebrew language. So let's start. The text speaks about the letter Aleph. Amda ot Aleph velo nichnisa lefanav. Amar la Kadosh Baruch Hu. Aleph, Aleph. Lama en at nichneset lefanai. Kishar kol haotiyot. Amra lefanav. Ribon haolam. Ki raiti shekol haotiyot. יצאו מלפניך בלי תועלת. ומה אעשה שם אני? ועוד, כי כבר נתת לאות ב' את המתנה הגדולה הזו. ואין ראוי למלך העליון שיעביר את המתנה שנתן לעבדו, ולתת אותה לאחר. אמר לה הקדוש ברוך הוא, א', א', אף על פי שבאות ב' נברא העולם, את היא ראש לכל האותיות. אין די איחוד אלא בך. בך יתחילו כל החשבונות, וכל מעשי בני העולם, וכל האיחוד אינו אלא באות א'. So, uh, really, the letter Aleph, though the Creator did not create the world with this letter, but He led this letter to be, to represent Him. That everything is in the letter Aleph, and it will be the first letter for all these letters. So we see that every letter has a special meaning and unique and important, and we cannot neglect any letter. We are all important because we all together comprise the completeness, Shlemut, Shalom, the name of the Creator, is because of the quality of the completeness. And uh, after the vessel will draw the light, the vessel will be also has the quality of the completeness and he will then become like the creator and feel the creator inside and will say that this kli, the vessel, is shalem, complete. Not only the creator, but also the vessel become shalem, complete. So uh, we have reached to the end of our first meeting. Uh, we are really want to invite you to join us in this journey to crack the code of the Kabbalistic Hebrew. And uh, we will in a, accompany you from lesson uh, to lesson to create, enable you an environment that will uh, uh, enable you feedback for what you are doing. It's not a, a regular uh, self-study course, but uh, the goal is to study together, especially this uh, Hebrew language, which can be studied really only together uh, in a group. And uh, so by the end of this course and all other courses expected, you will feel a more stronger connection to the source, to all the experiences you are now having in your spiritual life. And uh, Shalom is also uh, hello and is also uh, goodbye. It's complete. What can we say? So, uh, Shalom, all of you. And uh, we expect your, uh, your reactions, your participations. Uh, and we, can, uh, we will uh, adjust uh, to all of your uh, requests. 
So uh, thank you again. תודה רבה. And uh, uh, see you next lesson. שלום. Thank you.